Welcome back to the bench. As you can see, I've got a uh, vintage computer for us to tear down. It's a, uh, a Commodore um, C64. Um, I believe it's a C2. It's a, a later model with the uh, redesigned body and the um, the light keyboard, whereas the older version is what they affectionately called the bread bin, because it uh, yeah, resembled a bread bin and had a dark keyboard. Um, this one's in pretty disgusting state. Um, yeah, the keys are very crusty. There's a lot of marks on the um, the case. Um, I have powered this on and it does work, which is uh, a bonus. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I only connected it through the RF and the pitch is very fuzzy. So maybe uh, that needs looking at to improve the pitch quality. Could be that the, the capacitors are uh, a bit dried out in there and they need replacing. So yeah, what we're going to do is tear this thing apart and then um, give it a good clean up, um, replace the capacitors probably, um, put some new thermal compound on it, give the case a good um, scrubbing and um, the keyboard a really good clean because yeah, it is absolutely filthy. Now the case itself doesn't seem to have um, suffered from too much yellowing. Some of the keys are pretty yellow, but I suspect that's more from nicotine rather than um, UV light because it's only affecting a certain number of keys. And yeah, there is a distinct smell of nicotine. <laughs> so obviously whoever used to own this was a pretty heavy smoker. So let me just turn it over. Um, I've already removed the warranty seal. Um, I'm not sure if that's the original warranty seal, although the plastic is pretty white under there. And it was actually held on with some wax seals, which I've never seen before. So this is um, a model that was uh, made in Hong Kong. Um, there seems to be three screws holding it together. So without further ado, let's get this thing open. three screws out. So I'm guessing the rest of it is going to be clipped in. Yeah, it looks like it is. This is a Get in there and pop the clips. That's that one. Pretty dirty in there. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, especially here around the uh, ports and the switches, there is a lot of filth and fluff. Uh, looks like it's had lots of stuff spilt in here over the years. It's not in too bad a condition. Okay, the keyboard's held on by a couple of screws. One, two. Okay, let's lift this out. Oh yes. some 30 year old fluff in here. It's pretty disgusting. That's all gonna have to be cleaned out. Uh, yeah, and yeah, the keyboard's looking pretty grim as well. Okay, so we've got an RF shield. Let's dig out this crud. <laughs> yeah, well, it's probably been there for the best part of 30 years. Uh, the contacts on the ports don't look too bad. The inside of the case also needs a very good cleaning.
They certainly didn't want this thing moving around. Enough screws in it. Three along there. One, two, three, four along the back. Seven screws holding one armor shield down. Okay, let's lift this up. Last screw it. And yeah, this is also, yeah, needs a good wash and a cleaning. It looks like they're using the uh, RF shield as a heat sink for some of the chips. We've got three chips here which have a thermal compound on. So we'll uh, be cleaning that off and putting some new compound on there. Wow. Yep. Whoa, <laughs> a bit of old tape. Obviously it was used for something. There's another piece here. Yeah, it's completely dried out, whatever that was originally attached to. So the board itself looks pretty good. And um, it's a PCB assembly number 250469. And it's a revision for motherboard. Yep, yeah, I'll have to get a brush of some kind in here and clean out all this crap. Uh, looks like there's been a bit of discoloration on the pins from the power switch, but the power switch does work. So maybe that's just some oxidization. Let's see if we can slide the PCB out and take a look underneath. Is there any screws holding it down? Nope. Okay. I think probably at this point it would be a good idea to put on an anti-static brush. We don't want to uh, give a shock to any of those chips and fry them. Okay, so we've got another part of the RF shield under there. And some insulating paper. Just to, uh, yeah, stop it shorting itself out. Yep, so yeah, that comes out nice and easy. We can uh, give that case a good clean out later. So, looking on the underside, it's a gold colored PCB on the underside. Is that gold or green? It's a gold, goldy green. It looks pretty clean on the underside. There's no signs of uh, anything being repaired or replaced. Okay. Well, there is one chip, a couple of chips socketed. Just those two. But it looks like they were originally socketed. 8701, 45th week, and 86. Hmm. Okay. So let's just give it a bit of a brush, an old toothbrush. Try and get some of that fluff out from between the chips. Overall, it's pretty clean. It's just full of fluff. Pretty dried up. Okay, so we can just pop this shield off. I don't need something to leave with that option. Get 
this RF shield off. It seems to be pretty well stuck on there. Just to find something a bit more substantial. We have something. A screwdriver. Yep, it's clean. Oh, right, yep, and that's full of fluff itself. There's only one electrolytic in there. That's good. Although, in order to replace that electrolytic, you would have to desolder the entire RF module, which might be easier said than done. Oh no, there's a second electrolytic in there as well. A really tiny one. And there's a little switch in here for something. Uh, maybe we can just uh, give those uh, pots and caps in there just a few little tweaks with a tongue at the right angle. Maybe we can clean up the picture. Maybe it's just drifted a little bit over the years. Let's see if we can get the rest of that fluff out from around that switch contact. A bit of a clean up. You can see there, there's some kind of residue from that tape that was being put in there. So, more here. so there's not that many capacitors in here that would need to be replaced. That's 16 volts, 1000 mic axial. There's 220. 25 volts, 116F. So these are all on the power supply side, so they're just going to be like smoothing capacitors. Okay, and there's a couple more here. So hopefully I've got some to replace this with. 25 volts, 10 mics. Okay, it's a sneaky one over here as well. That is also going to be 4.7. And there's a couple more over here. There's quite a few more caps on here than I thought there would be. 220 at 16. 2.2 at 50 volts. Okay, I'm not sure if I have enough caps in stock to replace all of these. But certainly we can look at replacing some of them. Um, but uh, we'll leave that for a uh, later video. For now, uh, we just want to get this uh, cleaned up so that we can uh, have a good inspection. Air spray would come in uh, helpful, but I don't have any. Okay, let's go for a sideboard moment and let's take a quick look at this keyboard. And yeah, that's pretty disgusting. So, yeah, the actual frame is plastic. And we have our uh, key puller here. So uh, let's uh, just see if we can get a few of these off. Oh, they held on well. Okay. Yeah, and it's pretty disgusting down there.
Okay, so now all the keys are off, you can really see how grimy it is under there. So, let's set off the camera and uh, I will uh, get all this stuff cleaned and washed. And uh, no point in boring you with uh, watching me do all the washing of these keys. Uh, I'm sure you have better things to do with your time. So, I will catch you later.